Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's the season finale of HBO's original series, Watchmen, starring Regina King. Season one, episode nine, entitled, See How They Fly. Now we had a little bit more to watch this week at one hour and 17 minutes, and every minute did nothing less than give us laughs, give us jaw-dropping moments, and to answer a lot of the questions that we've been wondering about all season long. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, I give a recap of the entire episode for those who do not have HBO and for those who just enjoy the art of storytelling and I'll have offset to the side visual photos to look at to remind you of those scenes and at the end I give the review and the recaps and we start the conversations about the episode okay that's all coming up next It's Bunny. Just like all of the other episodes for this season, at the beginning of each episode, we see the word watchman that gives us a visual interpretation and an emotion about what to feel about this particular episode. So we see the word watchman on a movie time slate and we hear action. Then we hear the vocals of Adrian saying, well, hello, Robert. It's January 21st, 1993. Congratulations, resident Redford. And he goes into that same speech, into that same dialogue that we saw on the tape that Wade watched from 7th Calvary. And as he's doing that, we see a staff of people that are controlling the camera, showing him cue cards, reminding him about what to say. We have him reciting those things. And as he's speaking, we hear someone with an accidental cough during a take. And Adrian says, okay, let, let's, do this, let's do that over. So as they're preparing for another take, the camera pans out and we see he has a staff full of people cleaning the area, taking out the trash. And we see a housekeeping lady go into his office. And as she goes into the office, we can see that she's not there just to clean up. She has a mission and she's in there for something very specific. She sits down at the computer and she enters in a password and there is a vault that is behind her that contains several different test tubes of specimen. And when she goes into it, she pulls one out that says 2346. She puts in lotion to fill back in or contaminate it in such a way that if someone were to look at this, it doesn't look like anything's been taken out, doesn't look like it's been tampered with, and she places it back into the vault. She has her own vial that is inside a particular case that she's brought into the office. She takes that tube, she inserts it into an injection gun, and as she's preparing to do this, she is reciting, fighting inspirational quotes that are from the Wu-Tang. Now, if you are familiar with not only the rap group Wu-Tang Clan, you're familiar with the Asian stories and uh, the, the, the war uh, tales of the Wu-Tang Clan and how they um, were no longer under the enslavement of a different uh, tribe, but it's a long story about that. But she's reciting that to give her inspiration as she's preparing to insert herself. She sits back in the chair and she injects herself with something and we can know that this is probably sperm. And she says, F you to the person who is holding those those things, which is, which is Adrian. We fast forward more into time and 2008, and we see a short figure in the snow, wrapped up, walking up to Adrian's door, banging on the front door. Adrian opens the door with his robe and he kind of covers himself and he says, hey, you know, I don't appreciate fans coming up here and I don't, you know, I don't do the sign autograph thing. And we hear a mumble of, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm says what and she the person takes off the mask and we can see that it is who we know as lady true and she says look i know that you killed millions of people by dropping a giant squid and he's just like 
ah, that's crazy. I don't know why you would think that. And she lets him know that I know what you did. I'm the smartest person in the world. And I just came to say thank you for all of your hard work. And I don't think people recognize what you did. And I just wanted to let you know that I just appreciate it. And I think it was very smart. And then he says, oh, come on in. And he welcomes her in to get a hot beverage. When they sit down, they kind of walk in. She's looking at everything um, around her and she sees the device that's dropping all of the squid. And she says, well, you're still doing that. And she says, well, how do you know where to drop it? And he says, well, I don't have a particular place. I kind of just let it fall wherever it does. And it just keeps people in line. She said, that was a great idea. And it was awesome when you did it. But it's the same thing over and over again. It's a rerun. And he says, it's a what? She says, it's a rerun. Just smaller. What we need to do is we need to do something that has an even larger uh, capacity. Um, what if I told you that I could actually obtain and get every weapon known to mankind. He's like, well, you can't do that. I mean, if I couldn't do it, no one could. And, you know, you can't either. And she says, well, I know I can't. That's why we need someone special. And she mentions Dr. Manhattan, that he has the powers, he has the things that we need in order to get this done. And I know that he's not on Mars. I know that's a decoy. With my technology and with my smarts, I have had devices that pick up signals from his frequencies, from his radiation to ping where he is. And we know that he's on a moon. We know that he's there. And with my satellite, with a certain amount of hours, certain amount of days, certain amount of years, that satellite will rotate around that and take a snapshot. And Adrian says, you know, that's great and everything, but okay, you have all of that technology, it circumferences around, and, you know, you have a photo. What are you going to do with that? You know, sell it to tabloids? <laughs> you know, that's awesome, but what is that going to do? And she says that it's not just a photo, but it's going to let me know his exact location. And once I know his exact location, I can get him, and my plan is to get him and absorb his powers. And of course, Adrian ears opens because he wants to know what are the details. And he has this look like, please go further. <laughs> Lady True says, I want to do what Dr. Manhattan should have done. I want to provide clean water, no war, just, just to do all of those things. And all that I need is from you, $42 billion. And Adrian kind of gives her this look like what makes you think um that I'm gonna give you any money or that I'm gonna help you you know and she says well because I'm your daughter I am two three four six this vault that you have behind you this photo of Alexander the Great yeah you're one of those people where you want to collect your greatness you want your destiny or your longevity of who you are to just be in a vow, a vow and 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 just admired and your wowness is is just in this tube and my mother Bion made sure to obtain some of that greatness so you know I'm your daughter and Adrian said you know I was able to build a lot from nothing even though my parents had the capacity to help me, but I built greatness from nothing. So you obtained something that not only belonged to you, but you got the greatness by stealing. So with that being said, you are not my daughter. You are two, three, four, six, and I give you zero. And you can already tell that Lady Truth has that look of, oh, really? <laughs> then cut further into time where Adrian, he is in still in that prison cell. He still has on, he's placed on his uniform now. And he seems to be watching his clock and waiting for something specifically to happen. And then we hear a rumble and we see the cell shaking. And he looks out of the window and we see this beautiful large ship 
And we don't know where this ship is coming from, who it is, but we can make a guess that it's Lady True, but why? So he gets ready, he looks out that window, and he pulls the floorboard up, and he has the horseshoe so we can know that he's used that horseshoe to tunnel his way out of the prison. As he goes through the tunnel, he comes back out of the surface, and we see that it is the mask clone that has the gun and says, wait. I can't let you go. You can't escape. And they start to fight. And he says, look, if you do this, if you go any further, I'll have to shoot you. The clone shoots him, but we see that because of his armor and what he has on, he's able to obtain the bullet. They go into a further rumbling and fighting, and he stabs the clone with the horseshoe, and we can see that he sharpened it over time in order to do this. And there's a monologue moment where the clone says, why did you make me wear a mask? And Adrian explains that he needed that nemesis. He needed that presence of someone that was the enemy to keep him going, to keep that mask sort of, sort of vendetta of uh, him being the enemy so he could work harder to get out. And he dies. And as they see that this person has been defeated, the rest of the clones line up and they congratulate him saying that, you know, goodbye, master, goodbye, master. And they're all lining up and he's just, he has this look of finally I'm getting out of here. And we have a female clone that places the last piece of his vigilante costume with the golden band, crown, the golden crown, places it on there and he gets on to the ship. When he gets onto the ship, it takes off extremely fast. It, it, I mean, it catapults. And we, see, we hear this voice say, please get into this chamber area. You will be going through a very high intense flight. Make sure that you stand in this because in the next few steps, this will help you with starvation, um, nausea, and possible uh, episodes of being delirious, uh, being in space. So before he gets into this chamber, he notices outside that we see that on that planet, on that area that he spelled out, save me daughter so that emphasis of daughter is the point of desperation finally saying and sending that signal of daughter like you know maybe i'm accepting you as daughter now and just help me so we know that with that specific word maybe that maybe that was the spark in order for lady true to help him get out of that situation because remember she's been sending those satellites going around and going around getting those photos so he used those clones to spell out those words he gets into the chat Chamber. And then we see this golden fluid trap him into this mold. So we saw a few episodes back that Lady True had this statuesque formation of Adrian. So we know and we can conclude because we already thought that, but we can conclude that she used this to control Adrian in order to keep him in certain places. When he gets to the destination as he's getting there lady true meets up with beyond and she says that when he comes to he might say some things and beyond looks lady true in the eyes and she says i'm your mother and lady true has this look of fear like wow she's smarter than i thought how did she figure that out? But she doesn't have time to analyze and talk with Bion about that. But when Adrian is coming down the hall with her staff, you see the gold um, embodiment that's kept him trapped for so long. And it's melting and the staff is wiping him down. And Lady True walks up to Adrian with water and says, I know that you're dehydrated, you're very thirsty. And I know you can barely speak and barely move. And Adrian is gasping for air and, and slowly getting his motions back and trying to speak and he's swallowing the water. And Lady True tells him, you know, it was amazing that after all this time, you put the word daughter, that 
you know, I got to admit, it felt great being acknowledged, that you finally acknowledged me. I can't even imagine what you did in order to put all of those bodies together and to spell that out. And she's giving this tone of, wow, you finally needed me and I could care less about what you went through in order to do that. But you're here now and you're coming to. So Adrian, with air, is gasping and telling her that Dr. Manhattan, he's on earth living as human. And she says, oh, I already know about that. And there's something that we're going to do about that. And in less than one hour, I'm going to absorb all of Dr. Manhattan's powers and I'm going to do what I need to do. And Adrian is just like, what? What are you going to do? I, you know, he's just like, he can barely speak and there's only so much that he can say. And as he's doing that, he sees Beyond next to him and he's looking at her because he sees an essence of somebody that he knew or somebody that he worked with in the past. And she says, oh, meet Beyond. And he says, you cloned your mother? And she says to Beyond, I told you, and I wanted to warn you, warn you just in case he would have said something. So it's this very awkward scene and Beyond coming to the realization of actually seeing Adrian now in the flesh. Adrian sees everything that Lady True's been up to. He sees the capsule. He sees it and he's just like, wow, it's beautiful. He, he can't believe that she's built the millennial clock, that he, she's developed this vessel to absorb Dr. Manhattan's powers. And she tells him, well, you know, you need something on that's a little bit more suitable. And he takes off that costume and she puts him in a suit. We then see her and her squad. You know, she they all in the Jeeps. <laughs> they are pulling up to the area where the phone booth was. And we see the gentleman at the newsstand. And he's looking at everybody get out of these SUVs. And he says, Lady True, you know, I, I can't believe it's you alive in the flesh. And she says, well, you know, do you have my newspapers? I need all my newspapers and enjoy what you see because I won't be in the flesh or like this too much longer. And she walks off and she tells Ben, the time's capsule, let's go. And she takes her staff with her a little bit down the ways. And Adrian, he looks at the paper and he says... Robert Redford is still president? And he's looking at the newspaper like, I, I can't believe this. And the gentleman at the newsstand shouts out to the guy from The Wire. And he says, you know who you look like? And Adrian's just like, no, who? No, no. Like gloating, just waiting on the answer. The guy at the newsstand says, you know, you look like Ozymandias, you know, kind of a little bit. But, you know, maybe you could do him or do impressions and something like at a birthday party. But, you know, and Adrian brushes that off. And he's just like, well, you know, what have people been saying about him throughout the years? And he tells him, man, you know, it's been like 10 years and nobody even cares anymore. But what I heard was that he went crazy and he just walked into a jungle and he ain't been back since. And Adrian says, well, no, what I heard was that he was actually on the moon of Jupiter and he quietly was going insane. And the news guy was just like, oh, Okay, yeah, because he's trying to figure out why this strange guy is being so defensive. And as they're talking, they feel this rumble, and they start to feel things shake, and they look up into the sky, and they can see Lady, Lady True's device, this vessel to absorb all of this energy. And the newsstand guy goes, what is that? And Adrian is reciting, I don't know if it's from Ramsey's second of the end or what parable that he was saying but he he tells the newsstand guy it's the end it's over <laughs> agent blake is still in captivity and as she's sitting there she's trying to observe everything around her to get some sort of clue about what's happening what is going on she's seeing more and more and more people go into the factory and they're sitting down as if they're about to watch a show and as she's sitting there we see an older senior come to the front of the building and he gives the cyclops sign to get access to come into the factory and as she sees people walk in she's like wow I never thought this senator was a part of a white supremacist group or this senior person wow like I, I, I can't believe it she's seeing the truths of everything 
and she tries to ask the guard that's a member of the Seventh Cavalry, hey, you know, we're about to watch the show, what's happening? And she tells her just to shut up, don't say anything else, just sit there. And he receives something, some feedback on his walkie-talkie saying, hey, they're shooting, what do we do? We, you know, it's not going as planned, it's stuff happening. And he goes to Senator to tell him, hey, this is what's going on, listen to this. And he's telling him, hey, you know, just shoot back. What are you talking about? Shoot at the target. Why are you asking me this question? And as she's watching that going on with the senator, we see another person um, in the Roy Jack mask that walks up to her and very quietly and slowly says, don't look at me. Don't say anything. Just continue to look forward. And as that person is talking, it is Wade's voice. So we know that it's Wade. He says, don't look at me. Don't make it obvious. I had to get out of that sticky situation. It's looking glass. It's me. <laughs> and she tells him what the heck is going on and what is up with the cage. He's like, I don't know, but it was something I had to come back for. I know I had to be here. Just try to act normal. And as they're talking, we see this flash of light. And then we see Dr. Manhattan arrive and appear in the cage. And of course, Agent Blake is floored and everyone in the room is just like, wow. And the Senator says, it worked. I can't believe it worked. He's actually here. Then we cut to a scene of Angela. She's still fighting with the people that were in front of her house and she is breaking the fingers of one guy. And she says, where are they now? Where did they take him? What's going on? And as she's breaking his fingers, he's telling her, you can break all my fingers and all my toes. It's still happening. It's nothing you can do to stop it. Um, they got him now. He's in a cage. He can't get out. And she says, you're going to give me what I need, or I'm going to break everything, or I'm going to go the next thing is breaking your teeth. So I need to know what's going on. Senator Kane, you know, he's addressing the audience and telling them, wow, 34 years ago, 34 years ago, this Adrian Vite, you know, he dropped this monster on everybody and it changed everybody's ways of thinking. Instead of us, uh, of us getting the power that we needed, he made, People say, I'm sorry, and it apolog they apologize to people. Now you have cops that are masking, and it's just throwing off the confusion and us taking power on both sides. And there was just so much that he did wrong. And as he's speaking, we see this audience of white supremacists and, and senators and all of these people who are sitting there watching him make this speech. And as he's talking, we see that Angela clearly broke enough fingers and toes and teeth to get some information because she is making her way up to this building and she is shooting her way through and senator continues to speak and he says you know that day of the white night you know we 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 went through that process and michael instead of being in tulsa he gives me a call from mexico now tell me people, how is that possible that we were able to do the white night and then all of a sudden Michael is calling me from Mexico? Do you know how that happened? Do you know how he got there? And we see a, hear a voice in the back, teleportation. He's like, yeah, teleportation. <laughs> now how was that done? He goes on to continue and say, well, we finally have what we need in this cage. He's surrounded by the batteries that we were able to contain and now he can't get out. He cannot get out of this situation. Someone that's supposed to be a God, now he can't move and we control him and we're gonna take his power and we're gonna do what he was supposed to do. And the audience is clapping and they're admiring everything that he's saying. And he leans into the cage a little bit and he asks Dr. Manhattan, well, where are you? Do you know where you are? What's happening? And Dr. Manhattan, from the materials that are surrounding him, it has confused his mind. And he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what time that he's in. And he's mumbling different things like it's 1985. And, you know, he's not thinking clearly. And he says, you know, we got him here. We're finally going to do what we need to do. And we even got his girlfriend here to watch it all. And Agent Blake says, you look stupid in those panties. <laughs> 
And it was the comic relief that we needed because as the senator is talking, he's taking off his clothes in order to prepare to get in his chamber to apparently absorb Dr. Manhattan's uh, energy and powers and he has these weird underwear on and she said exactly what we were thinking. Angela walks in and she says, don't flip that switch. Don't do it. It's very dangerous. And AJ Black says, Angela? And, and, and everybody's just in shock that she's even, even there. She says, think about this. The batteries that you have that you stole, Lady True knows everything that's going on here. She knows exactly what you're doing. She allowed you to take those batteries. She allowed you to take that from her staff. You know, in other words, she's not stupid. And the senator says, why should we stop? Why should we trust you? You know, I, you know, how do I know that I should even listen to you? Listen to you. You're trying to stop this whole process. And Angela says, look, I'm putting my gun down. Don't flip that switch. Don't do it because as soon as you do that, she'll know what you're up to and she probably has a plan so much more than we can even think about. The senator ignores, ignores her. They flip the switch in order to start the transformation after he gets into the capsule. And there's this loud bang and blue hue that happens and when it happens everybody's distorted everybody's ears are ringing they're trying to slowly get up they're trying to see what's going on and we see ladies true vessel above everyone and we see lady true standing there and she says angela well i didn't think that you would see this and i didn't think that you would be here and it's sad that you'll have to watch it all Wade vomits and we see that Lady True staff, they have these devices that pull the weapons out of everyone's hands. So no one has any weapons. And Adrian is standing over Agent Blake and he says, well, hello, my friend. And she goes, Adrian, is that you? Am I dead? And he goes, no, you're not dead. But the night is still young. Lady True walks over to that white supremacy audience and she does the slow clap. Wow. Now I know that you might feel weird. Your ears are ringing, you're distorted. You don't know what's going on. Some of you also are experiencing nausea. Oh, by the way, where's the Senator? Oh, he he's in the chamber. Let's get him out. He doesn't want to miss this. So she goes to the chamber and opens it up and all of this blood and goop just spills everywhere and people are throwing up and they can't believe what they've seen. And she says, well, that's what happens when you don't filtrate atomic energy. The body just bursts like a balloon and you know, that's what happens. But when you don't do your research and you just think you can do something and you know, it really doesn't end well. Uh, Bien, can you hand me that letter from Mr. Reeves, please? And she hands her a letter and she proceeds to read to everybody. You represent the senior group of 7th Calvary and Cyclops. The terrorism of people of color, rape, murders, and the massacre of, and, and right in the middle of her speech, we have Judge's wife that says, could you just cut out the speech and just do it? And Lady True says, do it? She says, yeah, you're gonna kill us, right? So why don't you just stop the speech and just do it, just kill us. You are gonna kill us, right? And Lady True says, oh, oh yes, <laughs> of course. Yes, I'm gonna kill you. And she gets this device, she walks over to it and people are slowly starting to get up like, whoa, she, she might wanna die, but I don't wanna die. And they're slowly getting up, but before anybody can get up, she gets this device and pulverizes everybody and they disappear and they are out of there. They are gone and Angela, Agent Blake and Wade, they are seeing that she's not going to have anything stop her and what she's trying to do, even if that means killing everybody at once or anybody that doesn't agree with her, which is very dangerous. Dr. Manhattan is still out of it. He really can't put two and two together, but he looks down and he sees that puddle of blood from the Senator and he leans over to touch it. And when it, he touches it, it teleports Angela, Agent Blake and Wade back to Adrian's office and Wade 
<laughs> vomits again. <laughs> and Agent Blake says, what happened? And Adrian's telling her that he's teleported us to his, to my office. And Agent Blake is just like, well, why is he teleporting us to his office? That doesn't make any sense. We can't help from here. And Adrian said he's done it to save the day of course. Angela is pleading with Dr. Manhattan. What do you want me to do? What is happening? What are you thinking? And different things that he's saying, he's still mumbling and out of it. And he's telling her what's surrounding me, this material, it's, a, it, it's allowing me to stay really confused and I can't put my mind together where I am. And Angela says, you know, you sent everybody else away and you sent them somewhere else. Why didn't you send me if that's the case? And he says, because when I die, I don't want to be alone. And they lock eyes and they share this moment. And he says, right now I'm living in every moment that we were together. And he says, whatever you do, don't touch the light. Don't come near this area and you have to leave. It's very dangerous. And Angela is just pleading with him. No fight. Please don't leave. Try to get out. And he's just looking at her helpless in the situation. We see Adrian, Agent Blake and Wade and Adrian is typing in some stuff into the wall and he's asking Wade, hey, how many weeks ago was it? How long ago was it where you saw the the, the squid, the rain, the rain of squid and, and Wade is just like, oh, three weeks ago because he knows because he has that trauma from all the other things that have happened in his life. So he knows the last time the squid fell and he says, okay, three weeks ago and he's typing stuff in. And Wade goes into his monologue like, Adrian, you killed blah, 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 so many people. And you had people in tra with traumatic experiences. And you're still dropping squig, squig. And, and how long did you know? And Agent Blake knows about the details. And he's like, you knew? Adrian, did you know? that?" And, Adri and Adrian's just like, look, you're distracting me with all of that. And I'm really trying to think. Now is not the time to discuss all of that. So so so, da, da, da. so I can go ahead and, and configure and, and do what I need to do in order to help out the situation and to help our friends. Lady True, she started to, already started her countdown to absorb Dr. Manhattan's energy. And we see the diagram showing all of the power slowly diffusing in this apparatus so she can absorb it. And he's telling Angela, you have to move away. You have to move away. There's nothing you can do. I can't fight this it's going to happen and Angela is in tears there's nothing that she can do and there is a huge blast and it's so powerful that it knocks Angela back several feet so we see this scene that is showing the power of it all as she's absorbing all of this energy as Lady True is trying to absorb all the energy Adrian is calculating that if he can use the device that he had to drop squid, drop it in a special way. And he's telling Agent Blake and Wade, I'm going to drop this squid and squid in a certain radius of area. And when it comes down, it's going to be so hard that it's going to pulverize anything that it lands on. And I hope that nobody's in that certain radius uh, that y'all love because they're going to die. And Agent Blake is just like, okay, well, what do we need to do to save Dr. Manhattan from all of this? And Adrian's saying, well, he's probably already dead. And he just brushes that off. But we see her frozen in sadness and thinking about, wow, he's, he's about to die and there's nothing that I can do. And Adrian says, all right, we need to, to warn whoever is down there in any way that we know how, because it's happening and I'm about to drop these squid. Um, we then see Beyond. She walks up to Angela, and Angela, she's on the ground, still kind of knocked out from the blast. And Beyond says, You have to get out of here. You know, you can't be around here. It's very, very dangerous. You have to leave. And then we hear the police sirens, and we hear more and more cars start to pull up. And she says, You got to tell your friends that they have to leave, you know, um, it's too dangerous. You gotta tell them. And we see the cops getting out, they're drawing out their guns. They're seeing the device in the sky. They're just as shocked as what's as to what's going on. And as Angela and Beyond get up, we hear the ringing in the booth that was designed for you to call and talk to Dr. Manhattan. And Beyond goes into the phone booth. She hears the ringing, she picks it up and she looks at Angela and says, well, it's for you. 
Angela goes to the phone and she hears Agent Blake saying, Angela, you have to run. You have to get away from that area. Something very critical is about to happen. happen. You have to move. You have to get out of there. Run, run, run. We hear on the phone over and over and over again, Angela, they're going to come from the sky. Get away. Get in a safe place. She hangs up the phone and Lady True is still in her vessel preparing to absorb all of this power that's been collected from Dr. Manhattan and we see slowly that the squid are coming down very hard and whatever it lands on it's just going straight through it and Lady True is in her vessel and all of the sudden we see her body jolt and she's frozen into shock about what is going on and another squid drops on her and it's coming down so hard she lifts up her hand and there's this hole that's gone through her hand and they're coming down just more and more now we have this rain of just squid that are so hard and they're coming down so fast that it is slowly damaging and going through her chamber and so much so it's like little those tiny grenades or tiny little hard you know a squid that are coming down and it is slowly banging it up banging it up and beyond quickly thinking she goes into the phone booth and Angela tries to find something that she can use. She picks up something, I'm guessing it's bulletproof, has it over her head, and she starts to run. It is just pulverizing everything as it comes down. And Lady True sees that she's in a situation that she can't get out of. She's seeing the device being completely damaged and completely destroyed. And she says that last little mother effer because she knows that she is about to die. And the entire vessel is destroyed and lands on her. So Lady True is no more. Angela runs to the Dreamland Theater. And when she goes into this theater, she sees Will sitting at the front on the front row and she sees that her children are on the stage sleep and will says you know i told them that i was family and that they needed to come with me and it was dangerous and angela says well how much do they know and he says well not too much you know we're just here and we're keeping them safe and she sits down and angela is just wiped out she's sad that john is gone she's traumatized about what everything has just happened and Will says, you know, I'm sorry about what just happened, you know, and, and John, what happened to him? She says, well, you know, he's gone. And what about Lady True? And she says, well, she's gone too. And he says, I'm sorry it had to happen like this. Because as Lady True mentioned a little bit before she pulverized everyone with um, the white supremacist group that was there watching, he says that we made a deal. I would give her John and she would give me the justice that I needed. And it was really his idea that we did that. And he thought that that was best as to what happened. And he tells Angela, you know, you took my pills, like letting her know, like you, you took my pills, you know what I went through. And he said, I, you know, that justice needed to be had. It needed to happen. And John always knew what was best. And he thought that you always had to crack a few eggs to get things done. And Angela says, well, what does that mean? What, I mean, what does that mean? He says, unfortunate sacrifices, things that he thought that was best. And th people always wanted things of him. But going through what I went through, I needed justice. I was, I was hooded, hooded justice. Um, and Angela is in tears from it all and she's trying to make sense of it all and she just can't understand how there couldn't be another way and how John still couldn't be with them. Adrian, Agent Blake and Wade, they're still all together and Adrian says, well, you know, I have a little something that may be able to send you guys back and uh, I don't think you're going to have a problem with it because Wade, from my understanding, you should be able to fly the thing. And he says, well, yeah. And we pan around and we see Archie. And for those that, that read the comic books and Agent Blake says, Archie, you know, and something in me was just like, hey, oh, Archie, you know, and then, you know, I'm thinking, 
<laughs> from a sitcom. Oh, it's Archie. Oh my goodness, it's Archie. But for those of you who read the comic books, that was a very exciting moment to see it. And she's just, she's just like shocked that he still has it. Agent Blake, you know, she tells Adrian, you know, you're coming with us. She's like, oh no, I'll just stay here. I'm not coming with you guys. She goes, no, 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 no. You killed millions of people, sir. You are under arrest. And Adrian's just like, I just helped save humanity. And humanity, like, what are you talking about? You arrest me. I guess you're going to arrest the president and all these other people. She's like, yeah, we can, we can arrest them too. But you're coming with us. You are under arrest. And Adrian says, I can't believe, and you have the audacity and I've done this and I've saved this. And Wade just knocks him out <laughs> and just stops his, his monologue and what he's saying in his rant. And they start to pick him up and I guess load him into Archie and he's under arrest. Angela, she's come to terms that she would like Will to stay with her. And she says a few days, but we have this inclination that it'll be more than that. But she takes everybody before they get home to the bakery. And not only do they go to the bakery, she shows the children the secret area, the coded area where she keeps the sister night outfit, where she keeps all of her trusted and locked up information. And Topher, he looks up at the vigilante costume, fully indulged, not uh, scared, but more intrigued by what he's seen. And they share eye contact and it's kind of the understanding. We're like, yeah, that's me. That's what mommy really does. And then they head home. They're all loading into the house. We see her tuck in Topher. We see Will come in and he talks with her and he's looking around at the mess. And he's like, well, you know, do you need a little help cleaning up? She says, no, I got it. Just get comfortable. You know, it's been a long day. We'll talk about more stuff tomorrow. She starts to clean up and she sees the eggs that were dropped when John was making the omelet and he says, Oh, watch out for the eggs. And she catches the eggs and throws them down. She's remembering that day and how the eggs got on the floor in the first place. And as she's cleaning up, she picks up the egg crate and she sees that there's one sole egg that's left in there. And she picks up the egg and she looks at it and she remembers the conversation that they had on the first date when she asked him, can you transfer your powers? And he says, well, yes, I guess so. If I transition it into a life form and then that person consumes it, yes. And she remembers that when she broke the egg and she put it into the beer glass and she starts to have an epiphany and connect of when John told her that he was walking on water at the pool. And to please remember this moment because it will be important later. And she has a light bulb moment. She takes the egg, she takes off her shoes and socks and heads to the pool area, stands in front of the pool, breaks the egg, puts it in her mouth to swallow it, and we see her foot slowly go over the edge of the pool and make its way to the water, but we don't see her feet touch the water. And that, my friends, is the end of the episode.